we reversed what was considered an incurable decline in a 55-year-old man tethered to an oxygen tank. He's been battling type 2 diabetes for decades, but recently type 1 as well. And he was weighed down by hidden mysotoxin exposure, which all other doctors completely missed. And in just 12 weeks, his oxygen dependence dropped from 24-7 to intermittent. His walking distance quadrupled without oxygen. His HbA1c improved while decreasing insulin needs, and his toxin load was dramatically reduced. This is Robert's story. Robert is 55. He was once an engineer, but his rapidly declining health led to him becoming disabled. And by the time he found us, his life revolved around oxygen tanks, using three different inhalers and four insulin injections per day, and frequent hospital visits for respiratory tract infections, which would often require intravenous antibiotics as well as steroid injections. And the hardest part wasn't just the breathlessness or blood sugar swings. It was the slow erosion of his identity and independence. You see, Robert has two primary care doctors, but also two specialists, including a cardiologist and pulmonologist, and yet no one had any answers for him. Doctors told him to just accept the decline and just wanted to focus on managing symptoms and monitoring the further decline. Robert refused, and rightfully so. In his own words, I keep telling these doctors they must be missing something because my health has been declining so fast in just the past few years. And as it turns out, Robert was absolutely correct and what he was dealing with was far more than just late-stage COPD. In this case study, I'll show you what everybody else missed. The problem. Robert's biology had collapsed on multiple fronts. He was facing end-stage end COPD. He explained that he often felt like he was suffocating, which can be very scary for anybody dealing with it. His cognition has declined a lot, with him sometimes not able to finish a sentence. He explained that even when he was texting, sometimes he'd forget what he wanted to say before he finished typing the message. He had diabetic-associated neuropathy, so both his hands and his feet would often go numb and tingly, and now insulin dependence from type 1 diabetes onset, which is very bad and uncontrolled because his HbA1c is 8, and his daily highs are as high as 188 milligrams per deciliter, which is terrible. He has lower leg edema, which is typical of heart failure, although his heart was completely fine, and I'll explain more about that in just a moment, so stick with me here. Escalating inhaler use, steroids, insulin, and oxygen 24-7. But no restoration strategy. He just keeps getting worse. He wasn't just sick. He was stuck. The process. We didn't try to just patch symptoms. We rebuilt Robert's system with an intensive health restoration protocol powered by precision cell method, biological mapping, and recode framework. We reviewed his EKG and echocardiogram with Doppler on the right-sided and left-sided heart, as well as the MRI of his lungs. Now, on his echo, it was particularly interesting on the right side because I expected there to be some sort of decline or abnormality here, considering the fact that he has lower leg edema, which is typical of heart failure, and that the heart typically starts with failing on the right side before progressing to the left side as well. However, everything looked completely normal. So therefore, I suspect that he may have pulmonary hypertension, but his right ventricular systolic pressure was not high, which it would be if he had pulmonary hypertension. So then looking at his left-sided heart, there was nothing that was enlarged. His left ventricular ejection fraction was 62%, which is really good. And so we ordered more comprehensive blood work, including screening for some suspected autoimmune diseases. I personally wanted to screen for some broad autoimmune diseases in general, so I tested ANA, and if this would have come back positive, it could have been suspect that he did have an autoimmune disease and warrant further investigation, although we did look into a particular... A uh, couple autoimmune diseases as well. We took a comprehensive history and implemented 24 hour biomarker analysis, including SpO2. And I actually had an interesting conversation with Robert because he's an electronic engineer like myself. And so I was telling him that I actually designed SpO2 devices before in the past, and we were talking about how they work and everything, which was really cool. But I got him this wearable that he could put on his finger, which actually had a display, and it could give a readout of SpO2 in real time. This is important because if his SpO2 dropped, for instance, that would indicate that he needs to stop doing what he's doing and sit down and take a break. Because having a low SpO2 over a prolonged period of time can be particularly damaging. And actually, I saw signs that his SpO2 was dropping low on his blood work because he had hyperkalemia, which is high potassium level in the blood. And what actually happens under hypoxic conditions, which is lack of oxygen, is that the red blood cells release their intracellular stores of potassium into plasma. And this is what was occurring in his case. So key findings. Both left and right-sided heart were in great condition, no signs of pulmonary hypertension, late-stage COPD with diabetes, no autoimmune findings, 
And so I had a follow-up call with him where I questioned if there could be any mold in his environment. And he indicated that he knows he had mold exposure for certain because his basement is full of mold apparently, which he just never told anybody about because he didn't think it was a big deal. So I actually had to explain to him how big of a deal it is and that we have had prior clients in the past who, when they were exposed to mycotoxins, developed autoimmune diseases, including type 1 diabetes, as well as cognitive deficits and all sorts of other health issues. Because what happens with mycotoxins is that it increases zonulin levels, which in the gut are associated with celiac disease, but can cause a leaky intestinal barrier, which means that it becomes more permeable to things that shouldn't be getting in. And it also causes a leaky blood brain barrier. And the combination of those things can definitely affect the brain and cause cognitive deficits, like in Robert's case, although his chronically elevated glucose level certainly wasn't doing him any favors in that regard either. And so the precision peptide supplements and medication adjustments. I implemented some comprehensive lung peptides as well as immunomodulatory peptides, which will improve his immune system, which is very important not only following mycotoxin exposure, but due to the fact that he has diabetes, which means he has a suppressed immune system in general. And these peptides would even be advantageous for any type of autoimmune disease as well, even though he didn't have any. Mitochondrial enhancing peptides are important for heart and muscle function, as well as improving insulin sensitivity and lowering his glucose levels. And pancreatic and metabolic peptides were important because when I looked at his MRI, we saw that he has some pancreatic calcifications, which is abnormal, but not necessarily uh, too abnormal, considering that as you age, your pancreas does undergo morphological changes. Uh, but in his case, there was actually some calcifications. So it just makes these pancreatic and metabolic peptides even more important and essential here in his program. And we wanted to support detoxification and antioxidant status. So glutathione is a peptide, which is the master antioxidant and is a detoxifier, and it's a given. We wanted to implement some supplements to shift his body into utilizing glucose over fatty acid oxidation because that improves the amount of ATP that can be produced by mitochondria with the same amount of oxygen levels. Glucose is just much more efficient. And so there's a great supplement which can actually achieve this called mildronate or meldonium, which works by inhibiting L-carnitine levels, thus prioritizing glucose for fuel rather than fatty acids. Although there is a better medication which is often prescribed for angina in other countries outside of the United States, which utilizes glucose much more effectively than things such as Mildronate does. It's a very good medication, but hard to find in the United States, and we we're actually able to get that for him. We wanted some supplements to improve diabetic neuropathy. These are typical supplements you can get on Amazon, mostly micronutrients. And by the way, micronutrients that were lowered as a result of long-term high-dose metformin use. You see, when you take metformin for a prolonged period of time or in high doses, it can paradoxically cause a problem in which it worsens diabetic progression because it inhibits the, a certain micronutrient which is needed for insulin sensitivity, which not many people know about, but very important. And we wanted some mucolytics to reduce mucus in the lungs. So medication adjustments. We wanted to improve microcirculation so that his lungs capillaries can uptake a oxygen more effectively to the bloodstream. And we wanted to lower leukotriene synthesis and inflammation since inflam inflammation is a core driver of the pathogenesis of COPD and fibrotic remodeling in the lungs. It can over time cause more scarring. And we wanted to do a complete overhaul to his blood pressure meds because he's actually on an ACE inhibitor, which is not the best medication in his case because it leads to less breakdown of bradokinin and when this accumulates, especially in the lungs, it can stimulate coughing. And somebody with COPD does not want to be coughing more. But he was also on a beta blocker and also on too high of a dose of both of these medications because he was actually dipping into hypotension periodically. And I actually had to recommend that he drinks coffee in some cases just to get himself out of that. So it required a complete overhaul to his blood pressure meds to take care of. And ultimately, we did get him off the loop diuretic he was on, known as furosemide. The brand name would be Lasix there. And he needed this medication to reduce the edema in his lower legs. However, we didn't get him off it immediately. He needed it. But by the end of the program, he was indeed off of it. And that just goes to show the effectiveness of this program. So precision nutrition and metabolic reset. We wanted to focus on protein-rich foods that are anti-inflammatory. 
and limiting carbohydrate intake. And we helped to replace some sweet options, which he loved, such as ice cream, with healthy homemade options. And we even gave him a recipe for a homemade ice cream that he can make, which is very low in sugar and relatively healthy and that tastes good. And he really appreciated that. So the results, he was on oxygen 24 seven. His fasting glucose was 180, HbA1c 8%, insulin, he actually had to increase over the past year. He had recurrent infections, which often required hospitalization every couple months and required antibiotics intravenously as well as steroid injections. He had mycotoxins, which were really high. I think he was over the 95th percentile on ocrotoxin, which is a member of the aspergillus family, which is a very common type of mold to see in homes. And he was unable to walk a long distance, but after just 12 weeks, he was able to walk six minutes, 200 meters or so, which was about a four time improvement, but before he did it with oxygen and now he did it without oxygen. So it's really impressive. And also his oxygen use is only needed to be periodic, not all the time, but he definitely does need it on physical exertion, but he didn't have it for the six minute walk test. His fasting glucose come down to 120, which is a 60 point improvement. HbA1c 6.5%, which is still diabetic, but we did this while decreasing his insulin use by 20%, which is just really, really good. Things are moving in the right direction now rather than the wrong direction as before. He had no infections during the time that we worked with him, and his mycotoxins come down much lower. He says that he can run independent errands, work on hobbies. He was actually explaining to me how he was able to work on his mother's vehicle, which is something he wouldn't have been able to do until many years prior. Uh, he was able to go on some outdoor walks and take care of his mother. And this is what Robert said. I am now able to take care of my mother much better who needs increasing amounts of care. I didn't think I'd ever have the opportunity to do that with how fast I was declining and the doctors were out of options. You proved them wrong. And this matters because if you have COPD, your lungs get very stiff from fibrosis which sometimes makes taking a breath feel like oxygen isn't entering the lungs because your lungs do not expand as well when they're really stiff. So you can't get as much oxygen in, but they don't contract as well either. And as a result, you can have carbon dioxide trapped in the lungs. So not actually getting out an efficient air exchange. And it's sad, but the mainstream medical system offers very little support for those with COPD, unfortunately. And uh, you must identify the cause, whether it's environmental toxins, autoimmune, genetics, smoking, etc. Uh, it's never just genetics. I mean, you may be genetically predisposed to COPD, but there's always another core driver which is causing it. And the treatment should aim at fixing the root cause, reversing the fibrosis and lowering the inflammation because that can just make the fibrosis and scarring worse, and improving gas exchange in the lungs and it is possible to regenerate the lung tissue to a certain extent, as you have seen in Robert's case. And this is exactly what the Intensive Health Restoration Program was built for. Urgent, complex cases where decline feels inevitable, but restoration is still possible. And you can begin your own recovery if you or a loved one has COPD. I highly encourage that you share this video with them and go to peptides.link transformation and you can get a complete health transformation there. Also check the link in the description. I'll put the link there. And this has been Brendan Henry, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you for watching, and both myself and Dr. Ali Moslem will be happy to work on these types of programs for you. Uh, Dr. Ali does just as good as me. He's no worse than I am. Uh, we're on equal ground at least, if not um, with him actually exceeding me in some areas, such as diagnosis. But uh, that's where we're at, so thank you. And goodbye.